Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today I'm playing a donation deck, which is almost like two decks because we have a transformation of cyborg. So first up, we are a mono black reanimator deck in the main. So we've got all the things you'd expect to see. So a bunch of cool monsters to put in, like Archon of Cruelty, Grizzle Brand, Galter, Stampede Tyrant, which then puts in the other things, Atraxa. So we've got all that. We've also got the scan package of Troll of Kazadoom, Grief, and obviously reanimation spells. We've got some hand disruption in the form of Thought Season on Mask, which can both be turned inwards to try and get our big monsters into the graveyard. We've also got Entune to enable that as well. And we've got Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal to power it out. And then we just got reanimation spells. So let's just pull these one side. So we've got Animate Dead, Exhume, and Reanimate. So that's what we're doing here. This is something that's been a known factor for a long time in Legacy. And it's obviously a powerful Legacy thing to be doing. Blue Black Rescaminator is probably the most played deck in the format right now. And that kind of does a bunch of these things, but has like a different plan. We're going more into just doing the whole reanimate thing. Our mana base is just a nice clean bunch of swamps and some Urborgs. Now you might be thinking, why have we got the Urborgs? Well, let's have a look at our transformational sideboard. Well, 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 if it isn't my friend, Dark Depths. So when our opponent's boarding in a load of graveyard hate for our plan, what we do is we just pivot into a Dark Depths Thespian Stage Vampire Hexmage plan. So we also have these Spoils of the Vault, which can help find us one of our pieces. So we just sort of change what we're doing quite dramatically. So we can obviously keep all of our hand disruptions out help, but we can just board out a load of big monsters and our entombs. And that's what, 11 cards? And we just got four more cards to find. So we'll probably just be getting rid of something like the exhumes here. And that's a pretty reasonable 15 for 15 that we're going to be doing in a bunch of games, I would imagine. And yeah, that's it for this deck. We're just going to be making some big monsters and then making a really big monster out of the sideboard. All right. Let's get into it. So remember to like and subscribe and let's do some Dark Depths Reanimator shenanigans. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, we're on the play for round one, which is kind of where we want to be. However, we do not have any starting mana, so we're going to have to mulligan this one. This one can do Grief... Thoughtseize, a whole bunch of stuff. I think we'll keep this. We're probably getting rid of the Airborg. It's not really what we're about. So I think we're going to lead off on this Thoughtseize. Pick apart our opponent's hand. Okay, so we've got some Elvish Reclaimers. I don't really want to be in our opponent's graveyard. Because I don't want them to exhume. I'll get rid of this Green Sun Zenith, I suppose. Is that better? Like, the Mox Dion allows them to make two Reclaimers on turn one, and they can probably pitch this Dryad Arbor. So if we take this Mox Diamond, and then next turn... So they're almost certainly going to play an Elvish Reclaimer. So we untap, then we grief them, then we exhume. All right. And in Tomb. Okay, that does change things a little bit, doesn't it? Um, makes it kind of awkward... If we, if we want to get this in two off, we have to get through this Bajuka bog that this Elvish Reclaimer can can dole out. Um, interesting. Right, we'll play our Swamp. Hmm, if we Grief Pitching and Exhume, we get to take another look at our opponent's hand. I think that's probably okay here. We kind of need our opponent to play their other Elvish Reclaimer rather than holding up two mana. Because I don't think... Just getting a Grief into play here is going to be enough when they've got these Elvish Reclaimers that they can put a few cards in the graveyard then all of a sudden have two, three, fours back to block our three, two. So we're going to need to try and force our Entomb to do some action for us. All right. What did they draw for turn? A Swords to Plowshares. Um, okay, I guess we get rid of the Plow. So if we do get a big monster, we're more likely to get things going. Okay, so we're kind of hoping that our opponent doesn't just hold up two mana for this Elvish Reclaimer. If they play like Dryad Arbor plus Elvish Reclaimer. Right, they're just holding up the Reclaimer. Yep, that's part of the problem we're going to have to deal with here. Elvish Reclaimer is just so good in the format right now. Uh, this Dark Ritual isn't really going to cut it either. Yeah, I think our opponent has won this one. I didn't realise it was uh, Ali we are playing against. Uh, he's... Um, very famous lands player who is very good at lands. 
So I could have had that little bit of extra information. Um, and I've noticed also they've been uh, tweeting about how they're playing Green White Depths at the moment. I think it's really good. Um, okay, yeah, this works. This plays. Let's reanimate this Grief. And then in the hopes they're going to get a Paducah Bog here. And then we can Dark Ritual and Tomb Exhume. Now, they might not go for it here because a Grief is not great against them. Yep, yeah, okay. They, they knew it was bait. Ugh, get out of here, Knight of the Reliquary. That does make our Exhume worse. We're kind of getting caught by the fact that our reanimation spell is not a great one. Um, are we taking... We take the Knight, they can go and get the Knight back. That's pretty grim for us. But I guess if they get it back, we get our, our kind of cruelty, and that's probably fine. We could also just take the one drop, so that if they do play anything, it's going to cost them more. So they're more likely to tap out of what we can deliver with our Entomb, Dark Ritual, Exhume. But yeah, this game is going to be a real tough one to win. We saw my recent um, Turbidex build from the end of last week. I've even started including Elvish Reclaimer in Turbidex now because it's just so strong in the format right now. It just wrecks all these Rescaminator decks really well. And obviously we're Rescaminator adjacent, so it's going to wreck us pretty hard too. Caracas, yep. We're going to see this Knight. I still got the mana to play. I oh, know, Green Sun Zenith for X equals 2. They've got a Scavenging Ooze here. Scavenging Ooze, they do have a Scavenging Ooze. So, one problem we also have here is that Dark Depths is really poor against the Green White Depths deck. Do I think we can actually realistically win this game now? Like, we basically can't use our graveyard from this point onwards unless we can do two separate things. We need, we're going to need so much time and mana. I think it's just not worth wasting our time here. Our opponent's got this one. Okay, so, like, I think we are going on the plan here. Because reanimation is so bad against what our opponent's bringing. And I didn't like the exhumes. Get rid of the attracts and we get rid of the entombs. So we can still do some of the scammy type stuff. But again, our opponent's a source to plowshares deck with a bunch of graveyard hay and caracuses and wastelands and stuff. This matchup feels pretty grim. We basically need to just do a turn one get them on the play. So we need to try and steal a game by maybe them boarding out some stuff just trying to rely on graveyard hate and then we get to validate their graveyard hate that's kind of the way we can win this one i think um so this hand is pretty bad you need to mulligan this one uh yeah this is the problem we just sort of like a plus b we're not really going anywhere okay this is probably the best we've had so far so i don't think we can afford to keep this urborg do we need this lotus petal I guess we're going to get another swamp, so we don't really need this swamp. Alright. So we cycle our Troll of Cows of Doom, and then we animate dead. If we find a black card, we get to our mask first as well, and maybe stop something like a... Um, what's it called? Endurance-type jazz. Alright, so they got a blue splash. Right, we're going to be all in on what we do here anyway, so I think the correct play is to use this Lotus Petal. This turn. Okay, a Grief. Is that better than an Unmask? Possibly. Let's see what our opponent's working with here. Source of Plowshares is obviously a pain. Crop Rotation can go and get Bajuka Bog right now. Can also just go and get them a White Source for this Crop Rotation. Maybe the way we win this game is to... Oh, we've got Endurance as well. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how we're supposed to win this one. Looking at what's in our opponent's hand. Oh, he's got us covered. Yeah, I don't know how we're supposed to beat that. Well, I guess we could try and play, but we don't have either halves of our combo here. And they've already got an answer. I guess we could take this and then try and play out. But we're going to need so many draws to get where we're going. And our opponent's just going to have so many better resources. Like, this matchup is going to be bad because it's good against both halves of what we're trying to do. All right, let's go to round two and see if we can get a bit of a nicer match. Okay. We would like to find another land. But another land does make this hand pretty good. So I guess we keep this one. So I think we start off with Grief Pitching. Is it an Entomb here? I think it's the Entomb. Let's see what our opponent's working with. 
uh, up the beanstalk. Soul Guy Lantern. That's a little bit mean. Okay, so I think we take the Force of Will and then we Thought Seize away the Soul Guy Lantern. Goodbye, Soul Guy Lantern. All right. So we're looking for some mana, and that should be enough to do something scary. Tangle Pool Bridge, and they drew a Bauble for turn. Okay. So they can still find a blue card if they crack this Bauble. Land? Not a land. Well, I guess we're just going to play this in Tomb. In our opponent's end step, I think. Right, they found a Bauble. So you can see our hand. We saw the Exhume. Right, what is the correct thing for us to put in here? I think it is... Mm, Galta Stampede is... Galta plus Arcan of Cruelty. So that's two cards in one go if we can get this one in. Is that better than Grizzlebrand? Hmm, I'm hard-pressed to believe that's better than Grizzlebrand. All right, land. Come on, land. We found a land. We're going to try the Exhume first because our opponent doesn't have any creatures. All right, our opponent's scooping to that. That's nice to see. Um, I guess we, we try the full transformation again. So out with these ones. And that's the full 15, so we'll give this a whirl. I don't think we have enough ways to find our, like, Dark Depth stuff. Like, we could keep, like, a weird line in where we have Entomb so that we can Entomb our Hex Mage. That's probably not the wildest thing. But I think just Hand Disruption plus, like, a big threat like a troll is going to be a pretty fine way to win the game. I don't know if we want to be putting these Entombs in, because if we put the Entombs in, we do want to have some big monsters in as well. If we have big monsters in, how are we going to fit all these other things in? So I think it has to be the full 15 for 15. Okay, we have turn one, Thoughtseize, or, or turn one, Cycle Troll. Yeah, this is pretty good. We can turn one, Cycle Troll, and Thoughtseize. Turn two, Animate Dead, turn three, 2020. All right, sign me up. Seat of the Synod. Bauble, cracking bauble. What was our top card? Oh, wow. Um, okay, things have just changed slightly from where we were. Let's thought seize our opponent. We got Brainstorm or something here. A Fluster Storm. Okay. I wasn't playing around days because I didn't have an artifact, but okay. Uh, I guess we're not paying for this one. We couldn't pay for this anyway if we did play the Petal. Right, let's play the Petal out. We can use this to get our um, troll into the bin. Alright, our opponent's got some baubles and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised they have something like a Aether Spell Bomb in their deck. Whether or not they, it stays in against Reanimator. It's hard to say. That's probably fine. Oh wow, a Dark Ritual you say. So if we play out this Dark Ritual first... Then we can get Troll. We can, we can do it all here, right? So we can cycle and animate dead. Let's try this Dark Ritual out. Okay, so let's Swamp Cycle here. Get Swamp. Get Dark Depths into play. Cast Hex Mage. Animate dead a Troll. Alright, we did both halves this time. That's cool. Obviously, uh, the reanimation of a Troll isn't as cool as a Archon or a Traxxor or whatever. What is this? Blue and black. An Orcish Bowmasters. Where would you like to send this ping opponent? Alright. You're going to force us to make the 2020 we were going to make anyway. Interesting. This means they also don't get a 1 1 for their Orcish Bowmasters ping. Can I have a troll? Have well, they got a surgical? They have a force of will. Okay. Is your one card in hand or the one card on top of your library an Aether Spell Bomb? Lotus Petal. Okay. Could be an Ottawara. A petty theft. Yep, that's pretty devastating. Okay. So we need to find some more reanimation spells. Or some more Dark Depths action. We're not under a great amount of pressure just yet. So we've got a few turns to draw out of this. Alright, that's not great for us. Our opponent's going to be... Digging further into our deck, setting up more lands, getting more spells going. It's going to be awkward. See what I did there? Awkward. All right. Ignoring that. Let's carry on. Um, we've got 
a Brazen Borrower incoming next turn. So their clock is going to dramatically increase. But it doesn't look like they're finding a lot of action, so that's something at least. Alright, let's play Swamp. Let's unmask our opponent. Just an Ancient Tomb. Okay, so they don't have any action. They're just down to this lowly Brazen Borrower and this Orc Bay Master. But that is four damage a turn. So this is going to shut off reanimate lines relatively quickly. And up the Beanstalk. Yep, that's pretty good. They only have two artifacts. But these Ancient Tombs can tap for a bunch to make a Thought Monitor, if that's the thing they have access to. Thought Cast here is also very good still. It's a draw three. All right, this feels like a Thought Monitor, maybe. A Chalice of the Void where X equals two. Okay. So no more Beanstalks for our opponent. But no more Reanimate spells, apart from Reanimate itself. Um, I don't really want to play a Thought Seize because our opponent doesn't have a card in hand. So let's just pass the turn. The Urza Saga, that's pretty good. All right, we're going to copy their Urza Saga. That's unlikely to be good enough in the face of the Brazen Borrower, but it's something we have access to. Uh, okay, we're just going to take four, and then we're going to take a bunch from this Saga, and we're just never really going to get to do anything other than in this one. Hmm. I think the Dark Death's plan here is reasonable against them, considering they've got things like Chalice and Force of Wills, having a thing that we can do that doesn't actually require us to cast any spells. Fire our lands can be pretty useful. Right, so this goes up. We take four this turn. And then we take... No, we take... Yeah, we take four this turn if we make a chump block here. But if we do that, I don't think we win in this game. All right, let's just go to game three. Uh, I don't think we want the, the go hard reanimate plan here. But maybe we do. And they're going to struggle against one of these in play. But this is a lot of cards to find space for. I guess we could trim some Thought Seizes if, I, if we think our opponent's going to be putting Chalices and things into play. But then that's still leaving us trying to find three extra slots if we want this. I guess we could try the Spores of the Vault. And we could use Entomb to Entomb a Hex Mage. And that's the problem with some of these Transformation of Sideboards. You kind of don't get to do all the things you want to do necessarily. Um, the classic A plus B combo hand where we've got all of one half of the combo and then all of the one half of the other combo. But we have to mulligan this one because it doesn't do actually anything. Um, so this is turn one, unmask and do all the stuff, right? So we throw this back and then we can entomb, reanimate all in one turn with an unmask first. That seems like a very pretty powerful thing to do. We didn't see any ley lines or anything for our opponent in the second game. They don't seem like the sort of deck that would have the uh, ley lines. Right. Let's try and pick a hole in what they're doing. Flusterstorm, Mistress Bauble, up the Beanstalk. Um, I guess we just take the Flusterstorm for future and then we can just Dark Ritual and Tomb Reanimate. Tomb. I think it's Grizzlebrand here. Reanimate the Grizzlebrand. Pay seven life. And mm, what are we doing with this hand? We can cycle this troll. We can unmask to take their beanstalk. We don't care about their beanstalk. Um, I guess we'll just swamp cycle this troll. I don't think we need to do any of this other stuff. We can unmask next turn. And that's going to be better, because we're going to get a look at some more cards, especially if they crack the bauble. Right, there's a Saga. I'll find some Graveyard here in a few turns, but that's going to be too late by then. A Grief. Um, okay, I will Dark Ritual and put a Grief into play. Uh, a Brazen Borrower, that can get out of here. Do some attacking. And pass. So we could have drawn some more cards there and gone low again, but I don't think we need to necessarily. We can get another hit, gain seven life, and just make sure we have enough resources. A Tormod's Crypt, you say? Okay, that doesn't beat what we have in play, thankfully. But our opponent might have something that can in their deck off of the Saga. Alright, so I guess we go to tax here. Bash for a bunch. Well, I'm going to try and reanimate this troll, expecting it to get counterspelled. By the, well, not counterspell, but countered by the 
encrypt. Yeah. So this fizzles. Let me draw some cards. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff here. Uh, we didn't find another reanimate spell. Uh, we could go seven deeper just to try and get another lethal threat on the board. But this is going to make a guy. We don't just want to die to that. I think we'll play a petal out. Actually, we haven't played a land yet, so we can just, re we can just hard cast this other grief, and that's fine too. And I'll play out this stage. Cast this guy. So we know they've got a beanstalk over there. All right, they scooped it up. The reanimate thing was pretty good. And we kind of got there. Interesting. Let's go to round three. So we can just do a troll into reanimate, like into animate dead on it, and that's fine. Um, we're on the play. It's just a troll. Is is that fine? Like it's not very exciting, and it's cold to a bunch of things. Can we do better? I think we can do better, right? We're a broken reanimate deck. We should be doing broken things. Um, turn one Grizzlebrand. That's pretty broken. Let's do that. Let's get rid of this. Like ourselves, let's exile this troll. We'll discard our own Grizzlebrand. Then we'll reanimate the Grizzlebrand. And hopefully our opponent can't stop us. Alright, let's draw seven cards. Um, not the most exciting. Right, we're going to dump this Urborg. Alright, let's hope our opponent can't string together five damage in one turn out of nowhere. But we can entomb... And he's, uh, Caracas. That's pretty good. I don't think we're going to get to uh, deal any damage with our Grizzlebrand this time. Up it goes. So now I think we want to unmask. And I think we pitch. I think it's a Grizzlebrand now. Let's see what they're working with over there. Flicker Wisp, Orcish Bowmasters, Skyclave Apparition. None of these do a great deal. Orcs Bowmaster is kind of the most annoying here. If they flick a wisp bar, big guy, that's probably pretty good for us. So I guess we take the Bowmasters here. And then play this out. We will Dark Ritual. We will Entomb. Archon of Cruelty. We will Animate Dead. I guess they can flick a wisp out our Animate dead, but then it comes back, right? So, all right, let's get some more advantage going here. And unmask. All right, so we can use that next turn to take the flicker wisp before they can flicker anything. So our position here is obviously pretty good because you know we've got a giant yacht in play. Shadowy Backstreet. That's the surveil land. I could not have guessed that name. Given a million years, I don't think. But there we are. Alright, so we can attack them here. Draw an extra card. Take a big bite out of their life total. That's a grief. That's going to be pretty annoying for our opponent to deal with. Alright, let's unmask them. I'll pitch this troll. Uh, we'll take this flicker wisp, I guess. And play a land. I think we will take another card while we're here. Let's get rid of the Sky Club Apparition so they can't get rid of our animate dead. And then we have them dead on the... Oh wait, no. We, we have them one damage away from dead because the Archon has got minus one due to the animate dead. Plow here is pretty good. Alright, just a Stoneforge. Maybe that's a bit fast and loose by pitching the Exhume there because we could have kept that. And yes, they could get back a guy, but we would get back an Archon. If, I guess if they plough this, we're not getting it back, actually, are we? Lion Sash. That's probably going to be too little too late here. At least that's the hope. If we find a lamb, we can cast this. All right. An Entomb. Maybe we get to do something with the Entomb. Let's see what we draw here. All right, an Exhume. That's fine. This will hit them down to five. Then we will Entomb another Archon. And then Exhume it. And then the three life will be enough to kill our opponent. Yeah, we should have pitched the Grief to the Grief rather than the Exhume. But I was thinking if we draw another land, we can play the Grief was kind of my idea. But I think maybe we're supposed to keep that back so we can get something along the lines later on. But I guess we're more likely to draw land than we are to draw the Entune. So probably are right to keep the Grief in hand, actually. We only need to get through one hit of three, I suppose. Yeah, no, I think that was correct. All right, sideboarding. 
Um, this is going to be a matchup where this plan is very poor. We're just not going to be able to do very much with that plan, in my opinion. Because they've got plows and flicker wisps and all sorts of jazz. Like, when I play Turbo Depths, I, dis I dislike playing against Death and Taxes. We are like a Turbo Depths deck, but slower on the Depths front, for the most part. Well, that's not, that's not, not strictly speaking true. We do have a lot of fast management. So we're kind of similar speed, but we don't have any of the, like, protections, like, not of this world and Pith and Needles and stuff. So I think we just want to play Graveyard and just... Try and reanimate people. We don't have the most agency with how we sideboard. Alright, uh, our hand here seems pretty reasonable. We can keep this. We just make a turn to big scary thing. Alright. Lay on the void. You don't see that every day out of the old uh, Death and Taxes deck. But I guess they're black taxes now. Okay. Well, we have a plan. It's not a great plan, but I don't think our grief is going to get that way. But we can discard cards from our opponent's hand and then use those. So if we can discard a, um, what's it called? Skyclave Apparition, we can use that to remove their Lay on the Void if we reanimate it. And then we can kind of start playing. So we're not, we're not dead. I think we will pitch... Um, our opponent's not going to play out the... Yeah, they're not going to be playing out the Skyclave. I don't think. If they have it. They'll probably try and save it to hit something. Then more will play out some other stuff. So I'd like to try and find another discard spell. So that we can at least try and get the Grief into play as a threat to start clocking. Because our opponent's hand might be quite soft. And they kept it purely off the back of the Ley Line. Which is perfectly reasonable. But it seems like they've got a good mix of lands and spells over there. Lion Sash. Well, that shuts down our other plan. Hmm. Well, well, well. Do I want to keep playing this game is another question I need to ask myself. Um, right, we are going to make the grief this turn. What are we looking at from our opponent? Uh, there is the Skyker Apparition. That is one of the ones I wanted. So I guess we get rid of that one. The problem is they can just remove it now if they want to, to grow their sash. They didn't. Okay, that's good. So we need our opponent to tap out of white mana. And then we have a chance. Oh, wow. Is it happening? They're putting your into hand. Oh, wow. We found the line. If we can draw some more mana, we can do some cool stuff too. Another tomb. All right. I would like to animate dead this sky apparition, please. Let's get this lay on the void out of here. All right, that's that's step one, dealt with. So we bash with our grief for a little bit, and then it's going to be tricky to get to his lion sash. But we have more power in play, so our opponent needs to commit stuff to the board or at least fire off these solitudes. Our mother of runes is not great for us. So if they pitch cast a solitude, we can like animate dead their solitude to try and kill the lion sash so we probably go end of turn in tomb for arc of cruelty if they do the solitude they don't really have any need to do that um now this works right yeah this works if we go end of turn in tomb then we just need them to not use this wasteland or we can draw a land okay so let's put arc of cruelty in the graveyard all right we're in all right, so we can unmask pitching the Grizzle Brand. Now we don't want to do that because we want our Exhume to work here. Um, the problem is they can pitch the Solitude here, which is obviously a bit of a pain for us. But all right, let's entomb. I think we just get another Archon of Cruelty here, and then we cast the Exhume so they can't remove both of the things. So we're at least going to get a trigger off of this Archon of Cruelty. And they have to decide if they want to keep their Mother or their Lion Sash. If they Solitude to get rid of our Skyclave here, yeah. Then they'll get their... They pitch the Urine, yeah. So they're going to get their um, Solitude back. Which can then kill our Archon. So not amazing for us, as you probably imagined. But we're going to 
do something here. All right, so yeah, so get rid of this. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one, given what our opponent had there. All right, so now we each get a creature. They will get a solitude here. They'll probably sacrifice their illusion token. And we have to hope we draw a useful card here. Well, we got rid of the mother. That's interesting. Okay. Hmm. If we got, like, Galter instead there, then we could... We could have put our Grizzlebrand in. But again, they have the Caracas. It's just so problematic for us to get through all these things. We know our opponent's got the ley line. So how are we going to board for game three? Because I don't think we're winning this one. Ether Vial. So they're never going to spend the white mana on the crack. So we're always going to be able to foil one of our reanimate spells. What is the play here? We could get some more land and try and hard cast something. But is that realistically going to do the work for us? I think this one is gone. I think we're just better off going to the next game. Um, What do we want here? Like... Do we want to try and do the other combo? It's so bad against their Wasteland Source to Plowshares deck, but then our whole thing is not great against their Ley Lines if they have them. I guess if they mulligan really low, maybe we can just play a Grief, just hard cast a Grief and then win the game that way. Or we can do what we did just now and just reanimate their creatures. I guess what we, we could have done then is reanimate the... Just discard the solitude, then reanimate their solitude, kill their Yeah, if I solitude kill their Lion Sash. And then the next discard spell can maybe take something else. I don't know. Um I don't think this gets us where we need to go. Our opponent's gonna mulligan aggressively for what they want. Alright, so this is a hard castable grief. This is fine. Okay, this is a turn one grief off of these cards. I think we probably ship the Urborg. Alright, so our opponent's got a, a Lone Island in the Void over there. But, we get to remove the best thing they've got going on. Uh, Ethervile, Rest in Peace, Stoneforge Mystic. Thoughtseize. Uh, not a fan of many of these cards. They Thoughtseize us, what does that realistically do? we take the thoughts of these, then we can take something else next turn. We probably have to take the Stoneforge if we do that. The Ether Vial is going to be a problem at some point. I don't think we're beating that, though. All right. The Rest in Peace could definitely be annoying, and we might have to take that. Right, they're cracking a Prismatic Vista. And then we're going to see an Ether Vial. Yep. Right, so now we have to make some decisions on this Rest in Peace. Are we taking this or not? Are we taking the Stoneforge? I think cycling this troll is probably fine. We're going to want to make land drops. We don't want to expose this to a wasteland off the top. We're just going to get a basic swamp. Uh, we'll attack for three. So our next decision is, are we going to do any more graveyard stuff or do we think we can go all the way with this grief? That's basically what we have to decide now. Skyclave Apparition... No, thank you. I think we have to take the Skycraft Apparition because that just gets rid of our only threat, really. Alright, so Stoneforge Mystic can come down, fetch up a Cauldra, and, sh and then that's going to be smashing us in like nobody's business. Alright, we're getting two free damage off our opponent's Thoughtseize. Nice. Alright. A Dark Ritual. That is a real Magic the Gathering card. So, if they... They can rest in peace and Stoneforge Mystic. There's a Wasteland. We could lose our Urborg. Right, there's the rest in peace. So graveyards are off. All graveyards are off. But our opponent is down to 10. Uh, if we draw another Grief, we can cast it. That's kind of what I'm hoping for here. If we can do that, I think we can win this game. We don't get to do that now. So our opponent's going to put in the Stoneforge. And then they can put in a Batter Skull. And that will be us. Or they can put in a Cauldra. And that will be us too. So I think this one is over, unfortunately. Yep, Stoneforge, what are you going to find? If it's just the Cauldra, 
then maybe we could do some racing shenanigans, but no, it's the ballast goal. So we hit our opponent down to four, and then they're going to hit us and gain all that back. And then we're going to be stuffed. This also has Vigilance as well, which is pretty gross. Reanimate, that's not going to cut mustard here. They can't block this at least unless they've drawn another creature. Oh wow, have they drawn another creature? Yeah, alright, we're done there. <laughs> yeah, so the problem with our deck that we're going to run into here and there is that the things we're doing are both quite linear. And if our opponent has the right pieces to deal with what we're doing, it's not they're going to be like non-games, a bit like this one. It's not like we've got, you know, just good cards we can play. We have cards that need to work together to do anything. But if we had things like, you know, Doughty Void Walkers and stuff, we at least mount a fair game plan. But the first game plan we have is like hard casting a grief. All right, let's go to round three. Uh, round four, even, sorry. Um, turn one Grizzlebrand. I'll keep this. Our friend's called Honest Abe. Does that mean we think they're going to be an honest gamer? No, they're playing an underground sea. Hmm, interesting. I would like to cast a Dark Ritual this turn. Is that right? I'm just trying to work out if we just thought our opponent this turn. If we draw another land, I want to thought seize and possibly animate dead their scary thing. If they have one. I think the correct play is the thought seize. But maybe it would be getting too cute to like dark ritual and do this. But we've got reanimation spells to burn. Right, brainstorm from our opponent. So the best cards are going to be hidden from us. That's not very honest from honest Dave, is it? Let's uh, hide in them. Okay. Let's see what you've got, opponent. Uh, just a bunch of things, really. Um, I wouldn't mind reanimating his August Bowmasters, if I'm being honest with myself. Let's get that in there. That's a, a good, fair thing we can do. So, what did our opponent put on top? Let me see another brainstorm here. A Lorien revealed. Sure. So, they probably hid one card. Alright, we're looking at a Bug Beans deck, then. Yes, yeah, so they probably hid one good card from us. A Ponder. Because if they didn't want the card they left on top, they would have shuffled in their upkeep. So they left one good card. Probably something like a force would be my guess. That would kind of be a prize that you'd hide from the rest of that hand. I spent a long time with that ponder and did not shuffle. Alright, pretty happy to see this. So we could reanimate a Bowmasters here. Or we could aim high and try and reanimate our own Grizzlebrand. I like shooting high here. Although we could just... We could just animate Dead Dead Guy. We don't get to do it all then, do we? Let's talk to ourselves. Let's try and reanimate this Grizzlebrand. So if they got the Force, we can then just start exhuming stuff anyway. And if they, if they force the... Okay, it's a bitching Lauren revealed. But then we can just do that next turn. Like, we can exhume. Our opponent will get an Orcish Bowmasters, which is pretty good against Grizzlebrand. We'll still have a 7-7 seven, seven Lifelinker. Now, the other option there is just to try and reanimate the Orcish Bowmasters. But our opponent might be able to ignore that a little bit. All right, so the Merktide Regent is coming in. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. We don't have to worry about the Orcish Bowmasters anymore. Um... We might as well cycle this now for free. I guess our opponent could have a stifle. It's unlikely though, given what we've seen so far. I would like to exhume, please. This also gives us an extra creature in case they have some sort of way of removing one creature. Alright. So, we get to go again next turn. Our opponent is going to get Surveil Land here, I imagine, just to get a tiny bit of selection. No, interesting. No surveil lands in our opponent's deck. That's what that must mean. Unless they just have a black green one. But now we get to exhume again. I would like a grizzle brand, please. So we can block here and then just draw seven cards and get the trade. Did our opponent draw a removal spell? They did draw a removal spell off the top. Yikes. Uh, we obviously can't pay 7 life here because we would die. Yikes. And that was off the top because they cracked the flooded strand. That was a pretty good rip. 
Let's thin our deck slightly with a swamp cycle. Okay. And then tomb isn't gonna cut it. Yeah. Yeah, we got beaten by that rip off the top, but it's gonna happen sometimes. So this is a matchup where I actually think the cyber plan is very good. In my experience, uh, depths is really good into these sorts of decks. So let's try boarding out these things and going with the depths plan instead. Okay, we can just do like the scam thing and that's probably fine. If we can find spores of the vault or dark depths, then sure. But our deck basically has at most eight, uh, seven copies of Dark Depths, which include the Spores of the Vault. So, you know, our chance of actually assembling the combo aren't great. Whereas, like, in Turbo Depths at the moment, I'm running four copies of Depths and 12 Tutors. To give you an idea of what you need to reliably pull it off. And I'm not sure we can reliably pull off the old Dark Depths combo with what we have in our deck. All right. I think we want to... I think we just use this Reanimate to grief our opponent here. Uh, okay, so this means we have to take the Surgical Extraction. So we can actually get our creature into play. And then we get another Bite here. What do we want? Is it the Ponder we take? I think it probably is. Just try and force them into not being able to do anything. We've got the Thoughtseize to take the Bowmasters if we want it. So we're going to see the Island here. There it is. So we've got a Stifle. Stifle can't stop the Thoughtseize. And Unmask. That's probably not where we want to be here. Let's Thoughtseize our opponent and get rid of this Bowmaster. The only problem is our opponent can brainstorm away the Bowmasters. But you never know. They might end up brainstorm locked here. And that would be annoying for them. They did find a land, but it was a wasteland. They have two Orcish Bowmasters. Interesting. I guess we take out one of the Bowmasters. We could take out the other one at the cost of our Hex Mage. Is that worth doing? I think it probably is. I think our Hex Mage is not going to do very much for us here. I think we're just on the can we scam our opponent out of this game. They've also got a Wasteland, so I'm not expecting the the Dark Depths plan to really work against our opponent. We don't we don't have the tools to play around the Wasteland either. We don't have you know pithy needles and crop rotations and stuff. All right. Is this the case of the little grief that could? Okay, we've just drawn another one anyway. I'll take this. This will attack for two damage, and I will enjoy it. Our opponent does have stifles, which is uh, something I joked about in game one, but there they are. So it's definitely a card that's picked up in the format. It's kind of like dress down, where people are running like one or two copies of it here and there. All right, you found your third land yet, opponent? They have, and it's a fetch land, so they get to actually shuffle away these bad cards that they've put back. I have to imagine a stifle. Could be something they're getting rid of. Although, against the Hex Mage, it might be scary to drop the Stifle. Oh, wow. We just in, aren't we? I'm going to attack for some. And the Wasteland's down. This is, like, the perfect storm here. Here we go. All right. You've got a blind draw to try and find an answer to Merit Lage. And even if you do, that Brainstorm from our opponent. I have no qualms about admitting when I get lucky in a game of Magic the Gathering. Like we, I guess we could have had a Spores of the Vaults. We had like seven hits. But seven out of 51 is not the greatest ratio there. Like there's other things that we could have drawn that would have been good still. Uh, like if we would have drawn another Hex Mage, that would have allowed us to have lethal damage on board. And that would have been fine. If we'd have drawn an Animate Dead, the same thing. A reanimate again the same thing so we would have been we had a lot of draws to be fair making a 2020 though is a pretty good one although arguably just reanimating their bow masters would have been better all right we've managed to tie up the match I, I think our cyborg plan it's an interesting one like our opponent has wastelands and they have stifles which could possibly jam us up a little bit are we supposed to i think maybe we're supposed to try and find this elusive middle ground See, there's a thing I hate trying to do with these sorts of decks. Um, so put in one of each of these. So we need to find three more cuts. I think I like our reanimates. And our thought seizes, those are important. Yeah, it gets very difficult trying to cut further into our deck here. I'm going to put in some monsters. 
Maybe we're trimming on a thespian stage. Let's trim a couple of those and we have boarded in more lands. Can we get away with boarding out this troll of Kazadoom? Or should we board out a lotus petal? Maybe it's a lotus petal. Let's try and unmask actually. Let's try that. So we've got a few big monsters that we can do some stuff with. Um, okay. Weird hand. Kind of relying on our Lotus Petal to resolve, but we've got another draw step as well. I think I'll keep this. If they stifle our Troll of Kazadoom, that's going to... It's okay, so we're not getting stifled. A Nile Spellbomb. All right, so that plan is kind of off. Or we have to kind of work our way through it. Okay, Swamp is genuinely a very nice thing for us to see. Um, I think we cycle this troll, get ourselves another swamp, and we'll pass. So what we want to do is we want to reanimate on the troll as bait, and then we just in tune reanimate the other creature. The only issue here is that our opponent does have blue spells in their deck that we have to get past as well. But we'll see what we can do. So... Let's cast the reanimate, targeting the troll. My opponent's going to crack the spell bomb and probably draw a card. No, they're just going to let us have it. That's interesting. I'll we'll go to attacks. And we won't attack because our creature doesn't have haste. And I will play... Do I play out this Lotus Petal? I don't think we play out the Lotus Petal. It helps us play around potential days if we're trying to do some Entomb shenanigans, but I don't think that's what we're about. What is this? Two mana. Is this going to be a Bowmasters? A Shoulders Edict, sure. Okay. So taking the free six damages that we offered them there. Four line, uh, four cards in our opponent's hand. All right. A dark depth. That's not really what we're after. I think we're going to play out this swamp. Or are we going to... All right, I think we're just going to go for... this reanimate on this guy again. Is this the time you crack it? There's a pause here. I think our opponent might be going for the crack here. They're certainly debating it. Which means they don't have a really good, clean answer like they did last time. Right, they are cracking the spell bomb here. And they've stacked the triggers correctly. So that if they draw the card... We, so if they stack them the other way around, we can then cast a spell before they've drawn the extra card, but after our graveyard's been exiled. Right, so this fizzles. Let's play this Lotus Petal out. Let's cast it in Tomb. I think we're probably putting in the Traxxer. All right, our opponent's got some action here. Sauron's Ransom. Okay. Um, we probably want to split up the cantrips. Uh, we have to just make we have to make the top pile tempting enough that they maybe go for the bottom pile. Mm, this is a really tough pile to split. I think we split up the cantrips, but then obviously Beanstalk versus Brainstorm. Brainstorm and Brainstorm is pretty good. So we can have something like this. Or we could try and swap this one and see if we get the land. But we don't want to give them Brainstorm and Fetch land. So it probably does have to be like this. If we put the other one, they're just going to take the Brainstorm pile. Alright. Not not a big fan of this. Right, it took the Ponder. Is it just going to be a blue card to chuck into a Force of Negation? It is. All right, I will play this Dark Depths in the hopes that they Wasteland it. Because if they do, then our second Dark Depths might get there. And we haven't shown them any, like, crop rotations, so they'd be more likely to just fire off this Wasteland while it's good and clear. But let's find out. A Merc Tide Regent. That is a large customer to deal with. And if they don't Waste... Okay, they have Wasteland in here. That's good. That gives us Hex Mages and Alt here. Sometimes... You just call it, right? Let's play this Hex Mage out. They don't have Stifle Manor up, so we're just going to make it immediately. Wow. I guess if you rip all right, this deck is... Or if you rip good, this deck has uh, got a lot of powerful stuff it can do. Now, our opponent can have a Brazen Borrower. They can have another Shoulders Edict. They've got a Ponder to try and find one of those two things. But otherwise, we get to start crunching with our... Big old avatar token, as I've done many times before on this channel, and I will do many times in the future. Alright, so they're... They did not shuffle off that ponder, but then they're cracking their fetch land. So that makes me think they had another cantrip. So they're fetching those cards off and then getting to see three more fresh ones. Yep. 
So, does this do enough for them? If they can remove our Merit Lage, then we are in some trouble. I guess we could draw another Dark Depths. All right, they just didn't have it, and we managed to put the match together. Uh, our opponents, because they brainstormed, they knew what would happen the turn after they chump block. But we did manage to get there. We did get lucky in both the games we won. So I'll take it. With a deck like this, you kind of need to sometimes, right? Okay, let's go to round five. We are looking for the positive record here. Um, No. All the monsters, nothing to do with them. Let's mulligan this one. Uh, all dressed up with no land to cast spells with. Let's mulligan. Uh, we have into reanimate. Let's keep this. Into reanimate. Get out of here, Grizzlebrand. We don't want you. Let me get rid of the Airborg here. And we get to thought seize our opponent as well. That's probably worth doing before we attempt to reanimate because we do uh, we attempt an entomb because we do need our entomb to resolve, if possible. Let's see what we're working with over their opponent. And getting this off before our opponent can brainstorm and hide cards is really important too. Lightning bolt, days, some other stuff, a wasteland. Okay, we'll take the disruption for what we're trying to do, and hope they don't draw a force of will okay they drew a bauble which means we do get to entomb before they resolve their bauble draw so we have perfect information so we know this entomb is going to resolve in our upkeep and then we have to make decisions about what creature we're getting are we getting the archon or are we just getting good old-fashioned grizzle brand i think we want the archon here i think that's going to be the best against what our print putting down we don't want to go too low with our reanimates against all their burn spells. Can we draw a land? Draw a land, we get to reanimate right now. Or at least attempt it. Right, they are cracking. What have they drawn here? That's interesting. A brainstorm. Okay, so our brain's mixing their hand up a fair bunch here. And they're probably just going to throw away these wastelands. And turn them into real spells. Alright, we don't get to go now. So our opponent's got another turn to try and sculpt. I'm surprised they did that then instead of in response to our reanimation spell. An unmask. All right, that seems pretty good here. Let's just see if we can hit whatever they got going on. This could be a Seek the Beast. It is. So that's not a thing we get to strip from our opponent's hand. They do have a Force of Will. But if we take the only blue card in their hand, then they can't use it. They have multiple blue cards in their hand. As well. um, okay, I guess we're just taking the Force of Will here. We could reanimate the Archon now and just strip this Merktide from their hand. So do I want to trade this just for the Merktide in our opponent's hand? Or do we just want to try and clean that up with the Archon next turn? Yeah, I think, I think that's fine. We don't need to waste our reanimates into this Force of Will. Just let them have... So the Force of Will will go away at the end of our opponent's turn. And then we can just untap and do some reanimate shenanigans. Alright, so they're going to play out their little friend. Holding up a lightning bolt. They could have a daze here, that would be annoying. But we could draw a land. There are some lands in our deck. Let's try and get this Archon. We've done this little sovereign dance here to try and get our bit into play here. It kind of shows that you have a little more agency with some reanimate decks than you might think. Right, so they're probably going to get rid of a wasteland here. We drew an Exhume. That's not that exciting, is it? Okay. So they can play a Murktide Regent here, but it will die to the trigger of our Archon of Cruelty. They drew a Scalding Tarn. We have close to perfect information here. The Murktide Regent will be bigger, so if they've got like a one drop like a Delver, then they can... Oh wow, they're just going to double Lightning Bolt. Sure. Alright, so we know the cards in our opponent's hand there. We just reanimate the Archon and start over again. That does put our life total a bit low. But it only costs us, what, five mana for this? I'll have this Urborg. I will... If we exhume, we just get... They get their Questing Druid and immediately dies. So that seems fine to me. This does play... No, it doesn't play into days because they don't have days. Alright, so we immediately take this question it out and a card from their hand that's probably going to be the other wasteland there it is and we can in turn reanimate another scary beastie at any time 
So, feels like we've gotten through this one. Yep, we have won that game. Let's go to game number two. Do I want to go for this Vampire Hex Mage plan against our opponent that has Wastelands? I don't think that's where I want to be. I'd rather just try and discard through their permission and just do some graveyard stuff. But the issue is our opponent might be playing Graft Digger's Cage. So we're kind of priced into having maybe this like half and half split that we did before, which felt reasonable. Like if one if there's one thing that Rescaminator has taught people is that you don't actually need more than one of each of your big creatures to reanimate. So I don't like the exhume that much. So we'll get rid of the exhume. And then what are we trimming at that point? Maybe we don't need all of these Thespian stages, so we can trim a couple of them. And then like Dark Ritual is quite a useful one to power out some pretty gross early turns. We're just trimming like Maybe it's the Thought Seizers rather than the Unmasks because the Thought Seizers hurt us and we might be up against the clock. You know, they're going to have some aggressive starts. They're going to have all sorts of stuff going on. Um, we have Entomb Reanimate. We also have Troll of khazad Reanimate. All right. So far, so good. I don't want this grief. Um, we could just do like a really scary Reanimate turn right now. So I think we play out this Urborg. Then we'll do this Grief, exiling this Vampire Hex Mage. And if the coast is clear, we can Entomb Reanimate. If not, then we have to do something else. Let's see what our opponent's working with. We're going to see a Brainstorm. We're going to see a Stifle. Interesting. Um, I don't think we're supposed to go for it here. I think we're just going to cycle our Troll. We've got a lot of discard in our deck, so maybe we can find some more. That Stifle was pretty good from our opponent, for sure. We've also shown them the Hex Mage now. All right, so there's a Ponder. It's now the time to cast this in Tomb. I think now is the time to Swamp Cycle. We don't want that getting Stifle. We want to make sure we have a, a non-Wastelandable land. That might change our opponent's evaluation of their own Wastelands. They did not hit a land there. That's interesting. So their, their hand is all business, is what they're telling me. So I play out this Swamp. I would like to cast an Entomb here. Because they kind of have to counter this one, because this just makes all of our reanimation spells really good. Oh wow, we're just in with it, aren't we? Um, am I into Grizzlebrand? So Grizzlebrand would be 8 plus 7, so that would be 15. So we'd be on fives, so we die to Bolt Bolt, but our opponent doesn't have any red sources. Or we could just get this Atraxa. That's just pretty solid. Right, I'm gonna go for this Atraxa. Let's try and reanimate Atraxa here. It's interesting that the Entomb go. Alright, there's a Daze. I will pay for this Daze using our Lotus Petal. I think if they had a Force of Will, they'd be more inclined to just fire that off straight away. Although they're just trading a daze for a Lotus Pearl. That's that's not an unreasonable trade. Okay, they do have a Force of Will and a Pitching Metatide region. But we have our creature to reanimate. So any reanimation spell is good here. But I guess they didn't really want us to get a Troll of khazad either. That's kind of the reason you do that. You go, okay, they've already got a big monster. We just have to hope that we can stop them from reanimating anything. Obviously, we can draw ourselves a cheeky little Dark Depths get going so they brainstormed here didn't make another land so they are brainstormed lot but they got a bunch of spells do i want to play this hex mage i don't think so i think we just play this and we turn it into a swamp just give ourselves some waste and protection right there and pass like this entomb doesn't really do anything for us it means that if they have some kind of like graveyard wiping effect we can then put a different monster in all right they found themselves a red source so i imagine we're going to see a big threat at this point something like uh it feels like they're on one of the hands where they control things for a bit and then dump a merc tide yep that's what it is so we can remove all the counters off of this and massively change their clock which i think is probably what i'm gonna have to do here okay uh maybe not let's play this hex mage this does give me the option of counter spelling but we get to keep more lands in play so we can actually cast 
some other stuff if this gets countered. All right. It's just a him to Turak. Understandable. Let's cast Entomb here. While our opponent's got less available counter magic. I would like to put this Arcan of Cruelty in the graveyard. So we can reanimate the Arcan of Cruelty and deal with the Merc Tide, or we can get ourselves a 2020 Marit Lage. Do I think our opponent can deal with the Marit Lage? Yes. In their deck. They're going to have Brazen Borrower. Uh, reanimate. Oh, wow, we get to do it all here, don't we? I would like to reanimate Arcan of Cruelty. This takes us to 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it takes us to 4, but then we gain 3. So I think that's okay. If I have a Stifle for this trigger, that's going to be interesting. So we remove their creature. They're bombing us because they're going to lose the card anyway. We play this out. Let's make our Dark Depths. And all of a sudden, we've gone from nothing to having 26 power in play. Not a bad turn, as turns go. I will take that one. So our opponent is drawing off the top. They need to answer a 6-6 six, six Archon of Cruelty and a 20-20 Merit Lage. Or they have to dome us for 4 damage. So I don't know what they could do. If they had... Questing Druid, so they could seek the beast and find two cards, but they can't find two lightning bolts and the man mana to cast it. So I don't know what outs our opponent is on here. Like they could bounce our Marit Lage, but then Arkham of Cruelty is going to sail in and put us very far ahead, take us up to seven. All right, our opponent's had enough, and we finish with a 3 2. Uh, that result is fine. Let's talk about this deck. So like I said at the start, what we're doing is an intrinsically powerful thing to do, right? We're putting the biggest, scariest monsters you can find, like Grizzlebrand and Arkham Cruelty, Attraxa and stuff, into play as early as turn one. That's a pretty powerful thing to do. Um, it is very linear and can get broken up a little bit, which is why we have this Duke that doesn't use our graveyard. Unfortunately, some of the decks we played against today, like the games we lost against really, were the ones where our Duke isn't very good. So against the lands player... We don't like the green white depths player, we don't have anything to do with that. And against the death and taxes player, it's bad as well. So, we kind of ended up in some situations where our cyborg plan wasn't good against some of the things that we were losing to. And that is definitely a risk when you play a transformational cyborg like this instead of one that's just like a bunch of fair cards. You know, let's just board into Dathy Void Walkers and Bowmasters, and those cards are good. And if your opponent's too focused on your graveyard, they're just going to die to your decent creatures that you're playing. Whereas we aren't really doing that. Uh, I will say Spores of the Vault is not a card that I particularly ever want to cast, uh, and we didn't. So there is that. We just got really lucky and drew the things. And I think, considering we're trying to reanimate stuff and we're not boarding out the reanimates because it's still good with our scan package, I don't think Spores of the Vault is what this last slot should be. If you want to play a different tutor, then you can play a different tutor. Um, you could play... Expedition map, which is obviously a lot slower than Spores of the Vault, but considering, you know, we're trying to do Thespian Stage Dark Depths, I think that's reasonable. And you could also try something like the... Um, what's it? Is it Profane Tutor? The the one with Suspend. Some people will like to jam that one. That seems reasonable too. But... Or you could, you know, have some, some fair cards. You know, just have some Void Voidwalkers, for example... I think would be fine in that slot as well. Just something that can impact a game as a hate piece or just win you the game as a fair card. But yeah, like this deck is is fine. Like it's pretty swingy. Like your opponent's either gonna have the stuff that beats you and you're gonna fall on your flat on your face, or they're not. We did have a couple of really good games where we had to like against the first game against that last Delver opponent where we had to sort of navigate through their different counter spells and stuff. But obviously our hand was very good and allowed us to do that. But we don't really have any selection or anything like that. So we don't have the agency to sculpt that sort of game. Sometimes we'll just have the pieces and go, okay, we can play this out better. So it's kind of maximizing how you play out your hand and what you're mulliganing to. Um, but then the decisions are relatively condensed because you're trying to do something very quick and powerful. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Dark Depths decks, as you all well know. But... I'm not the biggest fan of Reanimator. I once built Reanimator player, uh, Reanimator in Legacy, but I wasn't really a Reanimator player. I played it a little bit, and it just wasn't for me. I definitely think there's, you know, the blue-black Reanimator deck right now is 
very strong. There's a reason why it's the most played deck by a considerable margin right now. I think it's not quite double the percent of the second deck. I think it's like 5% more than the second deck. So it's like 15, it's like 14%, I think. And the second place is like 9%, something something along those lines. Uh, so, you know, it's clearly a very powerful deck. But I think what we showed really is trying to like hit ourselves with unmasks and thoughtsies doesn't feel great. I don't think this deck needs to be running all of these cards. I think if you want some big monsters, you can just run less big monsters. So you can just run one of each. So you've got some nice in tomb targets and that could free up you like a whole bunch of space here now there was a game where we did thought seize ourselves to put the grizzle brand in and there was another game where we unmasked ourselves i believe so you know we are losing that a little bit but these cards are all black they will pitch to our grief or our unmask so it's not like they're going to be dead in our hand there's still a resource we can tap and you could play four other cards instead of this quite what those four cards should be uh uncertain I wouldn't mind seeing just four Orcish Bowmasters if I'm being perfectly honest. There's no, I know that's a, a very boring, clean shirt sort of answer, but uh, if we had four Orcish Bowmasters in here, then we had, you know, the Grief, the Troll, and then this going on. That deck, the, the deck would be better, and you'd be able to win more of those fairer games where, you know, your Cyborg Duke isn't getting you there. So I think that would kind of be where I'd want to take this if I was to improve upon it. Um... Not exactly a shock horror, is it? Make a black deck better by putting in four Orcish Bowmasters. But this is the world we live in. I will say the Urborgs are obviously pretty important for trying to do the Dark Depths out the sideboard, but they do n come at a cost because we are quite often very low resource in our deck. And if one of those resources is an Urborg, that does give us a point of weakness so the Wasteland can hit us and then we're going to struggle to maybe cast some of our two drops, which are going to be quite important as the game goes on. So that's something to consider with this. The troll does feel good. We have loads of things to tutor for, obviously. But yeah, this deck is pretty streamlined. I don't necessarily think the best thing you can do with a mono black uh, reanimator deck from the sideboard is to go into the Merit Lage plan. But we did win games with it, right? I think it's fine. Uh, it's a very powerful thing. I think Dark Depths as a strategy, like Turbo Depths, is very well positioned in the meta right now. It has few horrible matchups but those matchups are relatively low percentage i think the only bad matchup it has in any of the decks that are above two and a half percent i think is lands which is like four percent something like that at the moment in the meta i was i was doing a write-up today for an article that's, that's probably gone out by now but um yeah i think turbo depths has got some good matchups so i can understand why you would want to be pushing into the, like the dark depths plan and you know what is more fun in magic the gathering then turning your legendary Snowland into a 2020 flying indestructible creature. Like, this is who I am. You know, I'm going to enjoy some Dark Depths. But I don't think it's the optimal way to necessarily plan around this deck. But if you were to turn these four into Orcish Bowmasters, like I said, and then turn these three into Dalthy Voidwalkers, then all of a sudden, you've got a really reasonable mono black scam package that you can bring in, right? So you can, you know, you can do your discard and stuff. And then you've just got some Bowmasters, some Dathy Void Walkers, you know, you Grief and Troll of Kazadoom. You can kind of do that. The one thing we'll be missing in that situation is some, like, actual removal. And that's why I think keeping the Arcan of Cruelty when you sort of do, like, a, some of your sideboarding is kind of a thing that I like to have. Because being able to actually remove something once it's in play is good. And you won't always be able to go over the top. But then again, if your opponent is so focused on your graveyard that you can just kind of bash them with some evasive creatures like Dance of Walk and Grief. I think that's probably fine. And you can just maybe hope to draw these. If you don't draw them, then, well, that sucks, but it happens. Thespian Stage, it can cast... It's, it's not actually as much of a detriment as you would think it would be as a colourless land, because it does cast the colourless Pip on Exhume and Animate Dead and Orcish Bowmasters, which are the, the colourless... Which, which are, the sorry, the two drops that I would actually want to play. So it's not actually going to stop us from being able to play spells because it's going to be an additional land. It's not going to be instead of one of our core lands here. So I don't think it's actually a problem to have that as a colorless land out the board. Obviously Dark Depths doesn't, but it's in a spell slot again, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, I think I've gone over this one a fair bit. And I think if you made those improvements, you would probably find yourself getting 
a much better win percentage overall and it wouldn't be quite as polarizing what happens because like the way the deck is laid out right now is we're going to kind of just win or lose games with very little wiggle room whereas we'll have more games that were unwinnable that we can actually win now if we were to make that slight change all right i think i'm done with this one i hope you enjoyed me playing a bit of uh mono black reanimate with transformational cyborg i do like doing some weird and quirky things in this deck you know felt all right we're doing powerful things even though it feels a bit dirty from my perspective to have Dark Depths relegated to a lowly sideboard card. Sorry. Uh, sorry about that, Dark Depths. I apologise. Uh, but yeah, this, this deck was pretty fun. I don't think I could play it a lot because I think I would kind of get a little bit bored after a while. But uh, different things are for different people. And that's the joy of Magic and especially Legacy where there's a deck for everyone. And you can really find your own little niche that you want to play and enjoy it. And that is why it's such a great format. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.